is about app frames. App frames in the sense of you would like, and this is true, you, this is the, the thing where you, every product person in every startup you can blow away by doing something like this on the web. Like just to give you the walkthrough, like this is a simple little website that wants to feel and look like a whatever Deliveroo or Uber Eats. Um, and you can do all your fancy stuff that you want to do. And uh, this is how much I've worked on it. I think I showed this last time too. Uh, literally haven't done a single thing on it since then and you can like do all of these things and you can do them on the web and it works smoothly and nicely and looks totally like an app and can work like an app but there are a few CSS twists uh, best practices I'm not sure they're formally prescribed or necessary but they're just really good ideas um, actually, I actually want to see how far this is away uh, that you want to apply to make something like that because for example this little checkout here on the bottom the button that is not a position fixed right so the the typical CSS designer would go for a position fixed for this element right and there are many many reasons why you don't want to do that uh, rendering issues uh, Safari on iOS is horrible to deal with because of that these bars that just move away and all this kind of stuff uh, so forget everything you know about position fixed and uh, if you want to create like P PWAs progressive web apps that are kind of like usable mobile apps uh, you want to use uh, a different setup okay question time from me <coughs> to you um, <laughs> Like, who currently builds what they would consider websites? That's like more like flow content, like a medium blog page where you have like a website and it's there to put up your research paper or your content or render marketing materials or something like that. And who builds web apps? Like something that is more like an application, like that you could also do as a native app and it's not just for content exploration. This is typically the two different purposes of the web these days one is to publishize content and be indexable and pretty and survey content and the other one is to administrate something your own life sometimes or your bank account or you know order something somewhere uh, so these are the, the two major applications that are out there for websites these days web apps and websites and they use the same technology. It's both just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, but you couldn't possibly code them more differently, which is really interesting, and I'm having this argument these days a lot. Um, if you want to do a web app, if you want to administer anything, you're engineering an application, you're not building a website. Uh, and hence, you should apply the tools that engineers apply. Um, I'm currently helping banks and their typical approach to creating a web app, let's say your online banking, uh, would be they have some designers build some screens and then you have a shitload of screens and then some people figure out in an internal war on how to convert these screens into something that is a workable application. Um, that is the equivalent of designing a car and then taking photos from the front, from the side, from the side with open doors, then from the top, from the bottom and the back, and then going to your engineers and say like, okay, build me that, right? And then they're like, but how many horsepowers? Like, what is the engine? Like, do these wheels need to spin? Like, how, like, this is not how you engineer. You engineer differently, right? Like you engineer by giving different teams different interfaces that need to align to each other and then they build the solutions in between, right? The screws need to align and all this stuff. Anyway, so this is like web apps you should engineer properly. You should think of them components by components. So two good approaches that came about since 2012 and since two years ago are React and Vue that I would suggest you use if you want to do anything web app-like. Um, there are different reasons you should ne not necessarily use uh, them like too much or you use server-side rendering uh, when you do marketing pages because they reduce your indexability with web browser uh, with uh, search engines and all this kind of stuff 
Uh, sure, they get better at it, but still, like a server-side rendered website hosting your content is going to be listed higher in any Google search and uh, <coughs> listing than any sophisticated React single-page app, for obvious reasons, I hope. So technologies like React and Vue for web apps, right? Not for websites. So this is a differentiation I would like everybody to like really embrace because they're fundamentally different. They have different purposes and you should use different technologies and approaches to develop them. Um, so here we're looking at web apps. And since so many people struggle with web apps, I thought I'd give some best practices that I applied for the last two years on how do I make this beast of the website behave like an app because all this scrolling and it doesn't touch and fiddles and shit pops up and all looks horrible. And uh, most of that can be avoided if you just embrace like a, a, what I call like a proper app frame, uh, which is actually really easy to apply uh, if you need to support IE 11 onwards. <laughs> Anything lower, much harder, but fundamentally still the same idea. Um, who here has done development for Windows Forms or Mac applications or any iOS, Android apps, like native stuff. Three, okay. Um, they have typically a UI component library for where there's a component with functionality for anything. And you should approach the development of these things the same way. If you use React, use something like this, Storybook, and develop your components one by one, right? You build the engine, you build the brakes, you build the doors, and the door handles, and all separate, and then you integrate them later, right? So this way you can focus on each component at the time, self-contained. It's really great. So it's React Storybook, something that we now use at a bank, and I'm really proud of, <laughs> um, lets you create components for React, or if you prefer Vue, which is really cool too, and I love these days, <coughs> uh, so all my new private projects after this pickup thing is Vue. <laughs> um, same idea. You create Vue components and they co have their own template, HTML script for all the JavaScripty stuff and then scoped style for CSS. So you use whatever style you want. It's not going to affect anything else. No BAM, no whatever. Same in Storybook. Here you can see it too. You have the styles up here. Then you have some HTML that just went away. Um, and on the bottom you have the JavaScript. Really good. So component by component, in the end you assemble them. That's how you engineer an application. Uh, in this one, I want to specifically showcase the app container. Um, if we look at this HTML, um, not considering this diff, this is the actual app. Right, so this is a full screen app container. This is where it all starts. And this structure is something that you definitely need if you want to create a web app. You can't just start in the body with a header and a footer or something. You need an introductory diff. I use two here, I don't remember why, but you would need at least one and your entire application is contained within this one diff. Um, so why do you need that? Because you want to apply a few styles and these are some of the styles that you want to have. A, I recommend a column uh, flex container, like specifically for mobile applications because your screen is typically like higher than it is wide. Uh, so your first <coughs> division is typically in height and not in width. So hence a column container, but you can change it if you want. Uh, and you use height 100% or VH and width 100 VW. I use box sizing border box, not sure why it's not necessarily uh, super important and uh, typically I even do overflow hidden uh, which I think I did on another container uh, inside here although on this one it, it wasn't that important because I have the other things inside but this is the important part display flex flex direction column height 100% width 100% the body by the way padding 0 margin 0 whatever background color overflow hidden so you don't get any weird scroll bars if you don't do overflow hidden, you get weird scroll bars and stuff and the browser allows you to scroll the main document and that's something that you don't necessarily want. Otherwise you can't properly do side swiping, up swiping, touch effects and all this kind of stuff. Now, why do we want to have the, the column? Here's an example uh, that I have, I have a, an error 
that can show on the top if you are in a uber user or were at some <coughs> point you might see that the error message typically pops up on the top like when you don't have connectivity in the elevator at least that's a daily struggle for me um, and then you have the actual app container as a second element uh, this is the main container as you can see like when I hover it right it's blue so the error is currently not shown but it sits on the top and then you have this one and then I have a lot of modal sliders here which are all positioned absolute and they're positioned absolute because that's kind of my fixed position fixed right so anything that I put into this flex with position absolute I can use like a position fixed container on top of everything else and here for example the modal slider is stuck to the left uh, I can show you what it's for um, if you change the state we have a thing here main nav visible you know if you can see this if I turn this to true the menu shows up right so this is the modal slider that sits on the left and it just transitions in with the CSS animation from the left um, and that sits on top of the app frame the active container so this is typically the one that you would like uh, to hold all the contents of your apps let me get rid of this thing again so this is the whole thing let me show you why you want to have this app frame in another way let's say an error you don't have connectivity so we write no network and so the error message shows up on the top and you can push your entire app down because the flex container active with flex auto occupies whatever space it can get right so with the error message with a fixed size on top you put the entire thing down and that's essentially the main reason why you want to have an app container locked into 100% width and height with overflow hidden and everything contained within the visible space of the browser so that you can assign the space inside uh, very neatly so then you say but I want to scroll something right Th this stuff needs to scroll um, for that ideally you write your own component if you use storybook or Vue, don't make don't mix the, the feature of scrolling together with any other functionality make it an own component that is a scroll component and everything inside of this component will suddenly scroll there are a bunch of um, advantages to it if anybody of you uses react context you can make the functionality of scrolling in this container available to all uh, child ele elements in react so that for example you have a custom select box and you want to make it show up on the bottom with a fancy layover on your top of your screen but the select box wants to remain visible the select box as a child of the scroll container can now through the context actually say I want to be visible and the scroll container can implement that functionality and scroll to that select box really funky but make you sure you use one component that is just there um, and these components you write in a way that they have top bottom left right zero absolute position if you want them as fixed overlays or you use hundred percent width and height and a border box um, to make sure they occupy the entire space this way you can throw your components into any other container outer container and they will just fill up the entire space right uh, obviously it doesn't work for inline stuff like uh, text and so on um, but that's typically not things you use a lot in apps there their text flow text is something you avoid in apps ideally right and where you use it like here for example uh, you give it a defined container in which it can operate um, it's typically the leaves the leaves are flow text everything else labels and so on are well defined in how much space they can occupy and should very well define on what happens if the text is too long too short right how does it align uh, so that the whole thing doesn't break out of in other languages out of its scope and we get the funny CSS effect where it all hangs out of its containers uh, so that's the the main two takeaways that I want to give in my talk because I think I could talk endlessly about this is the fact web apps websites two different beasts two different reasons one is uh, the website is for marketing indexability presenting content educating people on something selling something uh, the other thing is administ administering functionality 
Um, you code them very differently. The web app should be engineered, hence built by components uh, that you can <coughs> nest and rearrange and create components as much single functionality as you can and rather nest more of them than trying to fit everything in one container, right? One important thing, whatever you want to scroll, does everybody know how to make a scroll container? Like with overflow auto? Let me show you one. So this container scrolls, right? Um, so we're gonna get, this is the shop container here. And the shop has this setting, overflow hidden, overflow minus Y auto, so that only vertically I can scroll, and WebKit overflow scrolling touch, which is an saf iOS uh, Safari feature that makes the scrolling possible on uh, Safari on touch and it gets this rubber band scrolling that feels very organic. Uh, so this is how you can make any container, any diff, any section, any anything uh, scrollable, right? Meaning it will obey by its own height and width that you gave it and any content that stretches it inside will just be cut off but you can scroll to it. And that functionality you build as one container for your application so that you can throw it into any other container that you want to, of which the content you want to make scrollable. So this is how that works. This is how, for example, if you, uh, maybe I make the resolution a bit smaller, let's go to an iPhone 5, um, and then a bit bigger. So now we see a lot less content on the same page. And if I want to add another cafe latte, I can scroll in here too. Right? Use extensive Flexbox, a lot of it, like Grit soon too, if you want. It's, even, it's even better, but it's not, not super well supported everywhere just yet, but it's definitely worth... You can't use it in production yet. Well, with a lot of effort, but I, I can't possibly make that case to a bank these days. Like, Flexbox, I can. Like, that's perfect. And Flexbox already solves 90% of the issues. And then you have some other fancy artistic ideas and then look into Grid already. So you're ready when you can really use it. Um, it's further than you think. So... Creamy Say what? Creamy Creamy? Where? Oh, sorry. oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I, w I will fix this. That happens you said bad things about Grid. <laughs> I, I, it's not. I didn't say anything bad about Grid. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, setting expectations. I'm using CSS for the Say again. No, no, no. I'm not that far yet, but you, you could make that too. Um, but this way, like using extensive flexbox on the top, you can. This is a small container, fixed height, uh, flexbox with fixed height. This in the middle, this scroll container, uh, is essentially a flex auto. And then inside of that, I put another diff that is actually scrollable that takes 100% of its available width and 100% of its available height, right? Uh, so that that suddenly becomes scrollable because the screen is too small, right? And the bottom one, again, is just flexbox with fixed height. So this is all not magic. Once you understand Flexbox, this is all actually super easy. And if you come from native development, all the UI components work like that. Like the, the space occupation and auto calculate depending on available screen size and so on is something that they all do. Uh, so you would feel yourself very familiar with these things. And this way you can make things overlay nicely in the container, they stick to the bottom. You can make containers like this, this thing here. It's the same container and I just change the state of it that becomes the pop-up afterwards. So you just transition a few CSS parameters with an animation and the same container becomes a thing that sits in the middle. And once you start coding a lot with Flexbox and within this app frame, you actually realize how uh, rather simply you can make these custom designs. Self-contained in the component, so you're not using Bootstrap or something where you load 100 kilobytes of data that you use then 200 kilobytes of CSS to overwrite, um, but you write bare CSS just by the properties uh, and create the components individually, like the way you want them. And then you use them inside these things. It's a few best practices, and I should have maybe written them down. Um, like the outer app container is the most important, uh, and then build everything else as components that you then apply, particularly where you need them. 
use React or Vue if you do complex engineering tasks and then look in scope CSS, suddenly CSS becomes so easy. If you just need to think, you create CSS just for this one piece of component and you don't need to think of, oh, do I use this class name somewhere else? Oh, should this look the same of this one? You stop generalizing. That's like one of the typical things that I did in my previous projects all the time. If you have global scope in CSS, you think like you want to generalize too much. Oh, this class I want to apply in this case and in this case and in this case. And suddenly you start, oh, but in this case I need to override it. Oh, in this case I need to override it too, but differently. And suddenly you have this like huge dependency of like some generic thing that then is like in three layers overwritten to like specifically feed one single purpose at a time. You don't do this in this approach. You focus on the components and they have their own CSS. Like suddenly you do very little generalization, right? Maybe some settings that you use CSS properties or whatever with to like define a global color, a primary color or something else. And that will save you such a huge headache. Suddenly your colleague can change the CSS by himself without destroying the rest of the app, right? Without BEM or any magic like that. So that's definitely the best way to go about. Uh, okay, I've rambled enough, I think. Um, particular questions or shall we start into the doctor CSS segment where you can tell us your problems and uh, the rest of us will try to help you fix it. <laughs> so what happens if you use it on a desktop? So good question. What happens if you use this on a desktop? It becomes just really wide right now. <laughs> right? Um, is that a bad thing? I would say no. Uh, so what we do at the bank project right now, because the, the requirement is, hey, we want a desktop experience and we want a web experience. Typically, if you would design the two with, without knowledge of each other, and you can see this by how web, uh, sorry, native apps are designed compared to desktop apps of the same company, of the same product. People think about mobile products very differently than they do about desktop products. The entire UI changes. It has different amounts of screens, different navigation schemes, everything. Look at Facebook on mobile, look at <coughs> Facebook on your desktop. I mean, it's, the entire thing is different. You can't even recognize the navigational tree anymore. Hence, using React or Vue something and, and creating UI components that you can reuse, you actually start making two different apps. And that's what we're doing there too. It's actually in the same code base, but we call them, like in, in Webpack, they're called two entry points. One is mobile, one is desktop. They still can reuse the same Redux actions, the same components, the same presentational components sometimes too. They're just assembled in a different fashion to make a different experience. So uh, we have a server-side flip that checks your user agent. If you're on a mobile device, you'll get the mobile app. Otherwise, you get the desktop app. They still share about 70, 80% of the code. It's just some containers are different. They are optimized for an experience that's higher than white, whereas desktop is typically the other way around, right? Um, this way, like you don't code much more. You're still just working with <coughs> one code base, but suddenly you're creating two separate experiences optimized for the screen ratios that you're looking at. So that's how I would go about that whole problem. So I haven't tackled that here, hence it's just a very wide app. But you can see how this container essentially does its job really well because this application, from a functionality standpoint, works on every kind of screen ratio, right? Like it's not broken. Like I can still do the same thing, right? It just looks a bit awkward, right? Looks like you downloaded a big picture. Yeah, right? But it's not technically unfunctional or certain things became invisible or something because the whole thing is just reacting to its space available. That, me that said, never use any VH or VW other than in the main container, like the outer container. Never again. That's it. <laughs> like, that's the only valid application in a web app is the outer container that directly sits in the body that's where you use 100 VH and 100 VW. Everything else is just percentages or absolute positions. This way you can throw components into any other container and they'll just adjust and be flexible. More questions? When you 
friends is gonna be live so we can still have your code. <laughs> you can have the code, it's on on, on my GitHub, it's public. Really? Yeah. I mean you can look into this if you want. Uh Oh, I might not be even locked in in Chrome. I typically develop in Safari. Sorry. <laughs> uh, how did I call it? FP app, I think. I am not locked in here. Um, yeah, let's do that. Should be somewhere up there. That there you can check out all the code, uh, play JS per day. Oh, I just call it FP. That's how creative I am. So here's the whole thing. Uh, very well not documented. Um, bunch of Webpack configs and a lot of source. That's about that. And use these things, they're beautiful and awesome. More questions? Good. Remember, Scope CSS will make you a better programmer.